Yeah, sorry about that. I set up that time lapse thinking like, oh, the clouds are all going to like evaporate. It's going to turn into a gorgeous sunny day, which it still might, but it just didn't while I was doing the time lapse. Stupid clouds. You obviously don't know who's boss around here. Anyways, let's screw some deck boards down. So I'm just using a screw for spacing here. These boards are really green, so they're gonna shrink a bunch more. So it'll probably end up being a solid quarter inch gap, which is what I want. Anybody notice what's going on here? I'm an inch out of square. Now I checked for square when I started because this end of the deck is square. And then here I am 10 feet later, not even, and I'm an inch out. So I should have been checking these boards because you look at this one right here, it's almost six and a half inches at that end. And then it goes down to six at this end. So all it takes is a couple terribly cut boards. I won't be getting it from that mill again. Shoot. They gave me a good deal on the wood and well, you get what you pay for, I guess. So now I gotta unscrew all this decking, take out this board here and probably one or two other ones that are all weird taper cut half an inch over four feet that's ridiculous so yeah i was standing over here and i'm like i'm looking at the decking and then i'm looking at the beam underneath you can see how the beam is crooked and i was like man i checked that beam for square that was square to the house so you got to pay attention when you're working with rough wood here Especially stuff that's really poorly cut. So everything is straight in front of the doorway. And then I get to this board here and we've got about a quarter, three eighths taper. So this is wider here than it is there. So I've snapped a line. I'm gonna pull these, I have to take off all these boards, cut these ones parallel, redo the round over, and then just keep working my way back and straighten the boards because they're all moving like this now right now this board here is half an inch this one here is three eighths so that's almost the inch that i'm out you know and then a couple of them are a sixteenth or an eighth wide so it doesn't take much to throw your decking off quite a ways i should have been checking it as i went but i figured i assumed and we all know what that does I assume. I have to learn that lesson like a couple times a year. EcoFlow creates eco-friendly power solutions that allow you to have power in any location, no matter how remote. Founded by leading creators in the drone industry, EcoFlow makes lightweight, portable power stations that can be used for home backup, outdoor adventures, and on-the-job needs. EcoFlow portable power stations are thoughtful in design and deliver smart and powerful energy storage products. EcoFlow is running an incredible holiday sale right now with up to $1,100 off using my link in the description. Check it out down below for some great gift ideas for friends and family. All right, so I'm super excited because EcoFlow has sent me out one of their awesome battery banks with an extra battery. When I heard from them that they wanted to send me out a battery, I contacted my electrician. They came out and wired up the place and my electrician was smart enough to realize if we run the whole cabin on one circuit, we can use this kind of plug right here, which is called a reverse plug. And so all I have to do is bring my battery bank in plug this little extension cord into the battery bank and then I plug the 
female end into the wall right here and that powers the whole cabin so the inside outside lights and i've got a couple plugs and an outside exterior plug so i can just leave the battery banks in here power up the whole cabin have a plug out on the exterior to be able to run tools and work on the outside of the cabin and the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little lb unit um, conduit and drill a hole right here so that I can run the MC4 connector plugs that run to the solar panels and have them in a conduit running underneath the cabin over to where my solar array is going to be set up kind of on a on a, a metal rack system that I'll be able to turn throughout the day to keep it oriented to the sun. So I'll be able to leave my battery banks in here plugged in, run the whole cabin, and have them charged simultaneously off the solar panels that are outside all at the same time. So, so huge shout out to EcoFlow. Thanks so much for sending me out this whole power unit for my cabin because this whole thing is self-sufficient now. As soon as I get my solar panels up and get some sunshine, we'll be rocking and rolling. The other nice thing is that the EcoFlow batteries come with a fast charge system. So in the winter time, like right now, we're not getting very much sun at all and we're getting a ton of rain. So worst case scenario, if I deplete my batteries, I can just fire up my generator, plug the batteries into the generator and they fully charge within two hours. And then they last approximately about three days of running the lights in my cabin using them off and on for some power tool use, charging batteries for my uh, cordless tools, and you know my phone and other stuff like that with the USB chargers. So all in all, I am super stoked on this system, and big thank you to EcoFlow for hooking me up. Let's light this baby up. And it's got a dimmer. You'd be surprised, the feeling that one gets just from having four walls and a door that they can close with light. When before there was just dirt here. Feels amazing. Heat also feels amazing. Well, good morning, guys. I'm back at it here trying to take the porch around the south side of the cabin here. So I'm just cutting my uh, 2x8 rim joist, which is going to go against these blocks here. I got one inch spacer blocks. Spacer? Spacer? Um, and then I've got backing blocks in behind that that go through the insulation because we've got three inches of foam here. So I wouldn't want to just screw through foam and then try to hang a rim joist on that. So I've got three inch blocks that I screwed through into the, the floor framing. Uh, so I'm just squaring up my end here. I'm gonna cut my little rim joist about four inches short here so that I can put a four by eight on the end. And then we're gonna run that one out 16 feet because I'm trying to create basically a deck that comes here and then wraps around this big rock right here because I want to build a fire pit on top of this rock and then have the decking kind of scribe around the fire pit so that we can sit up here, which is kind of like the high point on the property, have a nice fire, be on a flat deck for our chairs, and looking out at the unfiltered majesty. So, yeah, just framing a deck. It's pretty straightforward. It's extra fun when it's pouring rain. My buddies uh, Drew and Stacy are up in the woods trying to bag a deer right now. So I'm kind of half listening for a gunshot. So that'll be my cue to go up there and help him drag out a carcass.
the key to batteries are on their last legs here. So I'm putting these 10 inch screws through now. So the next thing I gotta do now is have a beam for these joists to land on. So I've got a 16 foot four by eight and I'm gonna try and uh, get it up as close onto that rock as possible because I got solid bedrock right through here. And then there's probably, I don't know, maybe only a foot or two of dirt before you hit rock right over here. So probably even less than that. So what I'm wanting to do is get the beam as close to the rock as possible so I don't have to do a lot of concrete work, right? I've got a little six inch sono tube that I want to just scribe onto the rock and then drill a, a 5 8 galvanized threaded rod down in, epoxy that into the rock and then cast the concrete around it in a little sono tube, right? Shoot them all nice and level and then I can just set my beam right onto that those is in a solo tube to even have it sitting on the rock right over here with maybe just a little plastic spacer. Um, the whole point of this build for me is to not damage or disrupt all the natural topography as much as possible. You know, I gotta dig out some stumps and stuff like that. But I don't wanna be blasting or pouring a lot of concrete. I wanna just kind of go right onto the bedrock as much as possible with just sauna tubes because that makes for a super strong structure being right on the bedrock and you know one day if they have Armageddon and everything gets wiped out hopefully this will just all be burnt away and you'll hardly ever know that it was anything here it's kind of a morbid thought um, yeah how well, my brain works That and concrete's a lot of work, so who wants to do that? Are right, you boys ready to go out hunting? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I think we're gonna call it because this is some nasty rain. The rain has been pouring down. 
and shows no signs of letting up so I think I'm gonna just go home been out here for a week and it's been like this so except for one day it was beautiful I'm ready for a shower yep yep shower and a toilet sounds pretty amazing right now no deer, but a whole lot of rain. Oh, yeah. baby. There's a little bit of rain. Yeehaw. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. A little touchy on the throttle. Oh, man. Get this thing cleaning. <laughs> I'm going to be so soaked by the time I drop you guys off. Come back. Come back. Get the fucker. I'm pretty sure my floats are taking on the water on that side of the dock there, but... I just wanted to say a huge thank you and shout out to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. Check it out down below for some great gift ideas for friends and family.